Hello, my name is Mariana, and today this is a reading for Virgo. So Virgo, as usual, I'm doing this reading with my own tarot deck, so the cards that you'll see are from this deck. So Virgo, let's talk about something that you're not supposed to see yet. However, you are gaining access to it. And I feel like it's just because you're holding steady. It's like you're holding your position to the point that you are not going to go anywhere else, like in the world, until you receive this revelation, until you receive this release, actually. Um, and it's interesting because I feel like you receive some sort of um, like message, like the divine message about how this is premature, perhaps, right? Because like, um, like it has to do with geography, right? With where you are in the world and this release, it's like it's going to travel like far and wide to get to you. So maybe that's the reason why it's very premature, like you seeing this right now. But as I said, it's like you are receiving this revelation now. It's like something is being released and you get to see it firsthand because before you couldn't. But right now, even though you're not meant to see it because the Two of Swords is beginning your reading, Virgo, you know, the way that this card flipped from the deck, it's like it spinned and spinned and spinned and, you know, was facing down. And immediately when I saw that it was the Two of Swords, it gave me this message of you're not meant to see this yet. It's not time yet, right? It's like you have to keep on like um, like just um, proceeding forward, but with your eyes closed, almost as if you... Um, like your steps ahead would be more uh, like lighter, right? Lighter as air, light as air. Um, if you didn't see this, because I feel like the like the enormous entity that shows up straight away when you bump into something that perhaps it's too soon for you to know, it's too soon for you to see, it's too soon for you to witness. The strength is coming here as this divine character, right? You know that, um, oh, I always forgot the name of that movie, but the one that the children, they go to this place inside the wardrobe and they meet this lion, right? This It's, it's like this guide or this... Um, the emperor of that place i have no idea but it's like this type of figure that is showing up here in this strength card it's like the moment that you it's like the steps that you're taking that are leading you to a sort of release and revelation sooner than it was meant to be right it's like you're meeting this guide and i feel like the 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 presence of this one is what gives you the impression that is too soon, right? Because it's like, in order to be standing in front of this very big entity, right? This very um, enormous spirit, like this divine presence, it requires a lot of courage and it requires a lot of steps in like um, strengthening your courage to meet this one. But it feels like you're, like the moment that you meet them, it's almost like, uh-oh, you know, too soon, but here I am, what can I do, right? It's like, and there is no fear, there is no, um, like, shock, right, of meeting such a big, enormous energy or entity or figure or spirit, right? It doesn't feel like a person, it feels more like a, like some sort of being that is um, otherworldly, right? But, it has like this uh, charisma to it, but yet it has like also this um, authority, right? This power of authority. And I feel like for some reason, it's like you're not afraid of that. You're not intimidated by that. Yes, it might be a little too soon for you to meet this character, but, you know, as soon as I was... Um, having this conversation with these two cards in the beginning of your reading, I was just thinking about how 
this message of like uh, receiving some sort of revelation too soon was actually coming up in a few recent readings where the magician was uh, coming reversed. And guess what card jumped out of the deck straight after I thought that? The magician, but the magician upright. And this magician upright is talking about how things that are meant to be secret are, it's like they have a purpose for it not being revealed you know, uh, in the right time, because it's almost like we can only take a few glimpses at a time in order for our steps to be as um, light as air or for us to trust in something that we cannot see. It's like we cannot rush into this process of, you know, entering in contact with divine beings, right? Extraterrestrials or, you know, archangels or however you want to see. Maybe this is your higher self. So there is purpose in terms of the magician keeping a few secrets, you know, um, under their hat. Because I feel like it's um, it's meant not to blind you or to scare you away. The Ten of Swords coming next. This is the revelation. This is the um, the release, right? And release in this double meaning of releasing something, like letting go, right? It's almost like the magician, which... To be honest, I feel like both of these cards, both of these major arcana are two facets of the same being, right? It's almost like this represents the veil or like what we cannot see. So the facet that is more secretive. And then this is the facet that is almost like what's behind, what is underneath, what's on the other side of the veil. It's like like looking straight at you, right? So it's like the first thing that you see once you cross that line and you have the revelation sooner than maybe you would if you didn't take this step, right, towards crossing this boundary. So this is what the two steps are revealing, right? It's like here, it's almost like you're walking, it's coming through as like you're walking on thin air. I have no idea what that is, but it's like, you're you're not afraid to like be so free right it's like so in such a boundless space right because here the two of swords are free are boundless they are it's like they're not limited by anything you know despite being the car that talks about like not having sight right not having this clear vision it's like, this is what I'm seeing with the Ten of Swords, but this is actually the dissolution of the veil, to be honest, because it's almost like, because you, it's like, because you took the steps to, to meet this one before it was time, it's like the veil is not necessary. It's like the, the few glimpses that uh, the universe usually gives us, like to prepare us to have this revelation like you know this big encounter is like this is not necessary with you anymore virgo because i feel like the magician which is the strength right is the same being just two different aspects of it or two different sides right the one that you see the one that you don't see or the one that is uh purposely meant not to be seen and here's the revelation like the full character right the full energy like maybe some sort of um entity embodied right in a like in the form of like an angel an archangel like a uh, it's it's it has a face right here is faceless here it has a face right so it has some sort of personality but without being like human i hope that makes sense but it's strong, right? And it is charismatic. So it's like, that's why you're not scared. But it's almost like when you have this, maybe uh, the first meeting, you know, when you meet somebody for the first time, and even though you don't have to exchange many words at first, it's like you just feel the energy of the other and you straight away know if you're going to get along with this person or not right? Or, or like you, you have like this sort of like, um, you read this person very uh, clearly, right? And I feel like maybe if this is your higher self, Virgo, it's like you, it's like you're seeing your higher self embodied, right? It's reminding me of a dream that I had once where I saw myself in the mirror. But you know, 
it wasn't like you know looking at myself in the mirror like i do here right it's like like seeing another one of me and i i know that i do have like a twin sister so i should be used to that but it wasn't it was re really really weird and i was scared i was afraid right so maybe this is the intention for this entity not to reveal itself like straight away at first right because it's such a big presence that it would scare away right most people so that's the reason why the magician keeps you know some things you know secret so that a few glimpses here and there you know prepare for this journey to release the fear right and so releasing the fear it's also releasing the veil so the dissolution of the veil is the dissolution of fear this is what this symbolism of these two are talking about but because it's like you were already here it's like you weren't you weren't being confined by fear right you want you weren't being um it's like you weren't scared of what was on the other side or you know you weren't scared of taking another step even though you couldn't see with your eyes closed right it's like maybe you do have this um very potent trust even though you know this might be the first time that you are actually meeting this one at least in this form in this manner maybe you are not scared right because you recognize the energy but it's like the shape that they are appearing to you that's that's a first right but it's not intimidating because because it's familiar right because you have received a few glimpses here and there so it's almost like that's what made you keep on going right and not allow this veil to block you from just proceeding forward so i feel like you it's almost like your your progress in terms of you know uh, releasing your fear which might be very thin right it's like you're walking on thin air already so it's almost like the veil for you virgo is very thin it, it's almost like it's non-existent right and that's the reason why the magician doesn't need to keep on um keeping things secret from you right it's like it's pointless it wouldn't um it's like you, you you're prepared right you are prepared to face this you are prepared to see this you are prepared to have this veil dissolve right have the this veil um it's almost like it's going to turn into sparkles right it's like uh you know when something disappears and it just like creates like this shimmery light right it just becomes the thin air that you were already walking on so it's no surprise that you are ready for this even though in the conception or the timing of the universe of these higher entities it was too soon right it, it's like it wasn't meant for you to see it yet right you weren't supposed to see them yet but as i said it's like you have such clarity about this with the sun because again it's like it's familiar right both of these energies are referring to leo which is you know the sign just before you and i feel like maybe that's okay so that's bringing a message here, Virgo, you being the sign that is right after Leo, right? It's almost like you have walked that path, right? So maybe, you know, um, maybe you have, you know, lived lives or a life as a Leo, like embodying the Leo characteristics, right? The, the courage, the bravery, this uh, boldness, the courage to like, just be who you are, right? Like, creatively expressing who you are like expressing your heart expressing your feelings and all of that so it's like because you have traveled that path and it's like it's almost like you weren't concerned that you couldn't see it's like you were just continuing ahead right because maybe because what you were receiving was already enough but you wanted more right because you weren't afraid of you know what scary thing could come up once you were on the other side and that's what like you know brought you to this other side sooner than what it was meant to be so the sun talks about like 
like cycles, right? Sometimes I see the sun as uh, a clock face or, you know, the timing of things. But because things are so clear for you in terms of how perhaps you have been releasing the fear and because of that, you're not ruled by it. You're not controlled by it. You're not restrained by it. It's like you're free, right? Yes, perhaps you're not seeing so far ahead because until this moment the magician has been still you know keeping things behind the veil keeping things under this hat but it's like you it's almost like it really doesn't matter what revelation you receive it's like what guides you is the desire to bring light to the other side of the veil, to the unknown. Like, go to the unknown and bring your light, bring your courage. And what you find, that's the reason why this character feels so similar and so familiar to you. Because it's like, it's the aspect that you were embodying to get to the other side. So, in a sense, it is you, right? It is this higher self. But it's so illuminating. It's so potent. It's so uh, um, all-encompassing, right? That even though this character might be showing up in this form for the first time, it feels you, right? It feels like part of you. It feels like you recognize it. It's like the light. <sighs> Talking about the light, I just started watching this Netflix show that is so gorgeous um the name is all the light we cannot see right so that's your reading virgo all the light that you weren't supposed to see it's like you see it right it's almost like the glimpses right the the few glimpses that you were given by the magician it's like you turn them into like this blazing light like it's a flashlight so that's the reason why it's like despite maybe all of the darkness all of the fear it's like you were always trusting your own light even though you couldn't see and it's so interesting because you know the main character in this show she's blind right she's actually blind so she cannot see with her human eyes but she can see like beyond anything else right like in the middle of a war like she could still find hope and this i feel like it's the energy that you are or you have been embodying so it's like you've never lost your hope right of finding this aspect of you because you are it you have been it for the entire journey so that's the reason why you don't feel the crossing of the veil for you it's not too soon it's actually like the perfect moment because it's like for you this veil never existed it's like you have always been the same way that you are you know whether you are on one side of the veil or the other whether you are on the known side of this veil or the unknown side of it it doesn't have any type of distinction for you it's like you you are bringing light to either side right and so Next card, actually, let me show you the two cards that are falling because they're showing the same things, just in different scales, right? This is um, the Five of Wands and the world. The Five of Wands is talking about your individual seat in the world, right? So it's like the larger scale. And remember when I was talking about like this uh, geography, right? So maybe there is some sort of like a distance like physical distance. And that's the reason why at first, you know, you seeing all of this, you releasing all of the fear and having some sort of revelation about what's on the other side of the veil, right? It's like bringing light to the darkness, right? And darkness, I mean the unknown, not necessarily darkness as in like um, something heavy or, you know, uh, evil. It's not like that. It's just the unknown, right? So, here if the message was that it was too soon that you were not supposed to see this yet it's like what you are bringing is so valuable 
is so incredibly um, illuminating to the world that no matter how far away, like, you know, you can, you think that your light can travel, it's like it can, right? And so that's the reason why also it's like, it's, it's the other way around, right? It's like, no matter how far you thought these entities were from you, right? Maybe beyond planet earth, beyond our world. It's like, here they are closer than we think, right? It's like, if we think of, you know, the distance in terms of light years, it's like you holding your spot, you because, okay, so the five of wands is coming through as um, like a heated seat, right? You know, when you are holding a spot for a friend right next to you, and they haven't arrived yet, right? So it's like you're holding their spot. And you know, you've been sitting there for some time now, and it starts to get warmer and warmer and warmer to the point that it's maybe you're sweaty or maybe you're like uncomfortable, right? Staying there. This is because your light is starting to um, like to illuminate you, right? To ignite your seat, right? Your, your beingness, your like where you are in the world, right? And because of that, it's almost like you're creating this uh, hot spot, right? I don't know if that's the right word, but it's what I just heard. It's like it, it's hot spot, right? This... Uh, what is the word? It's like this node, right? This this um, point of ignition. Uh, what is the word? It's like it's it's like a crossing of many energies, right? It's like many facets of the same being that it grows like together with your light, which is. It's like you're so light, right? You're light as air. And because of that, the moment that you meet these creatures and recognize them as you, it's like you understand that the veil is not necessary for you anymore because you understand what's in the light and what's in the darkness, right? And you're bringing the light. It's like you're helping to dissolve the veil because it's part of you, right? It's part of your facet. So it's if it's no longer useful for you, that it, it no longer uh, needs to be there in place, right? It's like maybe you're the bringer of light in a sense for the world, right? It's like the world is ready because you as your, like in your individual path, you have been trusting and holding space, right? Holding your position, like keeping this seat next to you, like preserved, but also ready for this ignition, right? This crossing of energies to heat up, right? So it's like this, uh, what is the word? Ebullit? No, that's not the right word. Like when something starts to um, uh, not burn, what is the word? Boil, right? Boiling point, right? So it's like the earth is boiling hot, but you're the hot spot. Right? It's like you're, you're this node, you're this, uh, this crossing point because it's like you're, you're the focus for the sun. It's like for the sun to shine because you're the sun. It's like you're, you're shining, right? You're, you're holding the space so that it's like you being there, you are warming up as I am, right? I'm starting to sweat here. And I feel like no matter how far away others are from you, it's like your light is reaching far and wide, Virgo. Well, Virgo is the representative of the world, right? Mother Gaia, Mother Earth. So Virgo, I am going to pull more cards for you as well as the astrological rooms in the extended reading. So if you want to join me there, I'll be very happy to see you. You can find the link down below. If not, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.